do you think I should add um, me just going like woo into the theme song? There you go. All right. Hi, I'm Zach. And I'm Matt. <laughs> Welcome to this movie was a hot dog, a podcast where me and a friend of mine, Matthew, watch a bad movie, critically, financially, or otherwise, then review it and tell you what we think. And it is October, and why most people doing this would uh, watch a horror movie, we watched a boring movie. And that movie is branded from 2012. What a movie it was. I I don't know. I think it was horrible, and that's as close to horror as we can get. <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of the horror genre in general, so this will do it. I mean, like it's it like it's so strange because it dips into being a horror film. For, kind of, it does in the later parts, and so for perhaps this will be a horror warm up for us. Well, do you agree with what I told you before you watched it, where I was like, these are two completely different movies broken up. The first hour is a drama, and the second hour is like an Sci-fi? existential... Right, something? <laughs> Question mark? Yeah, it uh, it definitely has two very different tones, uh, and will def- the crossing point will be pretty obvious, involving a giant scaffold and the sacrifice of a cow. Um, <laughs> but a magic cow... <laughs> But we'll get he to kills, that bridge later. He kills a magic cow. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're going to kill any cow. All right. Uh, <laughs> All right, so you want to take us off on this wacky journey called Branded? Um, always. So, uh, oh, oh, oh. Uh, uh, why don't you take off with what you're going to say? <laughs> well, no, because I, cause I, I didn't know if you were going to open with this before we go into the actual people. There's just an opening word scrawl that's listing historical figures like Gandhi and Joan of Arc and Aristotle. And they go, and it says, like, these people changed the world. They heard voices and they saw things. And then when you watch this movie, turns out that that has absolutely nothing to do with the movie. But do, uh, do you agree? I don't, he did not change the world. He kind of changed the world. I don't think so, but okay. <laughs> uh, we'll get I'll into get how we... to my arguments on how he did at the end. Okay. But yeah, so why don't you start off with the opening five minutes and the roller coaster that that is? Oh, I'll, I'll start off with the opening five minutes. That's my favorite part. Okay, it's the Soviet Union in the 1980s. The, America's never been better than before. We're the best country in the world. There's a Soviet bread line, and there's a boy waiting in it. He has his number written on his hand, and people are screaming numbers, and he's just laying on a bench staring at the sky. And that is, while staring at the sky, he sees the giant head made of stars of a celestial cow god turn down i guess and look at him and then yep. that's the last you see of that for two hours <laughs> <laughs> but don't forget it <laughs> but don't forget it because it'll come back but literally not till the last frame of the movie <laughs> so he wakes up as a we'll say 30 something who is pretty successful at a marketing firm and he is talking to his boss george bluth senior who is uh, Luth. what's the what's the name of the people in Arrested Development? Oh, that yeah. actor's name is Jeffrey Tambor. I don't know him as that. I know him as George Bluth Senior. Well, I know him by his real name. <laughs> mm, I don't care about that. So anyway, <laughs> so he's arguing with George Bluth Senior that he should be made a partner of their marketing firm. And if not a partner, at least like massive pay raise because of course being the marketing prodigy he is. Yada, yada, yada. Because it opens on him winning an award for marketing. Yeah. And the award is, did you catch this? It's a cow trophy for some reason. (laughs) The first first of many symbols that are cow-based. The first of many cow and beef symbols that they don't explain. I tried to research it. I couldn't find anything on it. I don't understand it. I kind of liked it. It is all over the place. Yep. So, yeah, he, he's trying to bargain for a uh, raise. Uh, doesn't really happen for him. Uh, he ends up going on, like, was he dating the girl yet? Or he was just in the car, and then he gets a phone call that's like, 
by the way, the most recent thing you did kind of sucked, and you're fired. Uh, he meets the girl while he's winning the award. They, right. like, sort of hit it off. Uh, what's uh, George Bluth's senior? It, it's his daughter, and he yeah. tells... Oh, the main character's name is Misha, by the way. Yeah. He tells Misha, you know, stay away from my daughter. I know she's got a thing for you. Uh, then he's in a car with her, and... He gets a phone call. It's just like, you're fired from this uh, big movie coming out that's just called Belarus. <laughs> it's like the dumbest name for a, It looks like a Saw movie, but it's called Kinda. Belarus. And this guy speaks, first of all, Misha speaks perfect English. He's a Russian, but he was, his dad was British, and sometimes he dips into an American accent every once in a while. The he accents just, are all over the place. Sometimes, and, yeah, it's like... Apparently in Russia, the news can just be in English sometimes, but not like Russian English, just like there's just a, an English person talking. Well, I mean, I don't know how much that's Russia as much as just this. So this movie is in, mostly in English. <laughs> but it is a Russian movie. Like, this was a yeah. Russian-American movie supposed to, like, this was going to break the boundary and be a big hit in both countries. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Whatever else it was, it wasn't that. Um... <laughs> But anyway, so go through a bunch of boring stuff, in my opinion. Then we end up at the boardroom of a bunch of Captain Planet villains. In, on an island in Polynesia. You're right, we skip a bunch of boring stuff. And this is like 15 to 20 minutes into the movie, and then all of a sudden there's a narrator. There's a narrator, and we have... Uh, there, it breaks in throughout, like a lot of... Um, Every now and then we're kind of pulled out of the story for kind of a quick history lesson that is narrated over, and... That you don't really see it coming, so if it's narrated, then you at least have the idea that it's a flashback, but if not, then it'll just hit you, and you just have to hopefully understand that it's a flashback. Yeah, it's a, it's a female voice, it doesn't really, like, it does, there's no lead-up to it, it just happens, like, in my opinion, way too late in the movie, and then you're right, it just sort of comes and goes, like, as, like, I feel like the script was originally really long, and they're like, you know what, we'll just sort of talk our way through this one. But anyway, so we're on the island of the Captain Planet villains, where, <laughs> where they they are the heads of the, the fast food chains, or maybe just one, I don't care. And they have No, just, they, are, they are the head of the fast food chain called... The, right, the burger. The burger. Right. The movie, not great at creating names here. Did you but, did you see did you catch any of the names it creates? Uh, <laughs> like Ramek or something like that for the the Coca Cola stand in is called Soda Soda. And later on, he looks up himself on Google. On Google, O O O G L E. Then yeah. there's a, instead of Apple, there's Yeppel. And, and then what was like, the Microsoft stand in? Because they showed that one right after. Yeah, it was like it was. Like it, it kept the soft part. It was very stupid. So a lot of uh, a lot of like the '90s cartoon fake brands get made for this movie, which I found amusing. Um, but anyway, so they they're kind of against the ropes right now. People are looking to get thin. They're looking to ditch fast food for healthier alternatives. And these people just need to hire a ringer as a marketer. They just they money's no object. They go for the best of the business. And he comes out basically saying, "You guys are fucked. People don't." You mean if, you mean first he turns around and goes, <laughs> "I mean, hello." He basically does that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this, so this guy's evil. Like you take one look at him and you're like, "Oh, that's the bad guy." Except he like never he never goes out and does anything directly. But yeah, he's the bad guy. He puts a woman in a coma on purpose. Well, you, through his orders, that happened. <laughs> but he never like he never goes straight up Sith Lord and like strikes down. You know, you're right. He does. He does everything short of like personally killing a man, <laughs> which I think, you know, but so anyway, is he has just said, like, you guys are fucked. We we can try going deep on this one and just throwing out the rules on marketing and just rewriting pop culture to just get rid of the current trend of board skittiness and start making fat. OK, not not fat. OK, making fat popular and cool. Yeah, and it, you're right. It goes one step beyond that and making it mainstream. <clears throat> we cut to that, and then we cut back to Misha, and I oh, just have to say... Oh, you can't skip this one line. I, I was setting that up for you. So he goes, how far are you willing to go? <laughs> and the guy with a heavily Russian accent says, we will go as far as the law allows. 
Does that strike you as all, like, the mentality of Russia? Like, one (laughs) of the most corrupt countries on Earth? No, 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 we don't want to break any laws. Like, we want to make some money, but, I mean, got to be respectful of the system. <laughs> it's so true. It's so, And it takes no coaxing, because he's like, well, I don't want to break, we don't want to break any laws. And he's like, well, we're going to break some laws. And then they're like, oh, okay. Like, <laughs> All right, well, you twisted our arm. We're going to break some laws now. Well, then there's a scene after that, and this was my favorite line. He's uh, Misha's flirting with the girl yeah. in a car, and he she puts her seatbelt on, and he kind of laughs and goes, huh. It's amazing how you Americans believe in seatbelts. And I, first of all, I went, well, why wouldn't you? They work. Like, yeah, what, right. do you mean, be- what do you mean believe in them? They're not like, it's, 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 it's not, not like, like people- organic or something like that. Right, exactly. It's a seatbelt. And then she goes, well, they're advertised very well. And I went, no, they're not. It's the law. Remember all those seatbelt advertisements we watched growing up? It's like if you went like, people don't speed because we made not speeding cool. It's, they're not marketed. <laughs> they're not. <laughs> they're not marketed. They're just like there is a law in the books that says if you don't wear this, you have to pay the like the government money. I was like that line bugged the crap out of me. That didn't make any sense. That was that's one of so the movie itself, like the cinematography was great. Uh, yeah, there are a lot of cool scenes in it. I'll give it that. The, like a lot of it, the the bones of it are pretty strong, but every now and then the writing of it, like. They're just things people the, wouldn't say. It's got the skin of a flabby old man. <laughs> exactly. It just, on the surface layer, there's just something wrong where you're like, eh. But then, like, the rest of it's, the rest of it's so passable that you're like, okay. Well, part of me sort of started to think, like, is this, like, writing because it's like, this is what, this is a Russian saying, or this is how a Russian would say it, and in English it just doesn't work? Yeah, or is this I feel sort like of a Russian awesome translation? Or is this like a Russian thing? Because that seatbelt line was a jab against Americans, but for something that's like not offensive, they're like, oh, those Americans always wearing their seatbelts. Yeah, right. You're like, you're like, oh, you got me. Yeah. So, and is this the point where, like, he looks to his left and there's just a girl stripping in the car next to him? Yeah, because I guess it gets really hot in Russia. Like, so hot you need to take your outer layer of clothing off? Well, so she was just... So, the Russian traffic, like, and this happens a few times throughout the movie, they're just sitting in traffic and, like, apparently anything goes in Russian traffic. There's a girl who completely changes her clothes... And, like, just bra out and everything, and then just... People have sex in a car. <laughs> people are just fucking in the streets. And, and like, I, get, I guess that's a Russian thing where it's like, oh, you know, in Russian traffic, you don't move for hours. You can do anything. Yeah, <laughs> right? Like, you can just play a game of chess or, you know, fuck, <laughs> and no one will give a shit. So it's sort of at this point where I wrote down in my notes, they have, a fla- they have the flashback to Misha discovering his, like... They almost make it seem like... He has magic superpowers. Yeah, that's like so. Initially, he just thought it kind of sounds like he has a knack for it, but later on, they build up kind of a mythos of him having a supernatural power. Right, but it's not like a supernatural power. It's like, oh, he's telekinetic, so he knows what people want, or he's he's he has ESP and he knows what people want, or he has like an actual superpower. He's just so good at marketing. There's no way to explain it other than he is magic. And then they and then so they have this flashback of where you know he worked at a kiosk and he got the kiosk to be really rich, blah blah blah. And then uh, Jeffrey Tambor comes up and asks him to be a marketing spy. But not a corporate spy, no. a government spy, but I don't know how he's getting any kind of useful information from his job. It, yeah, it's not, it's not a spy in the sense of actively like reconning, breaking into companies, doing that. It's all completely passive. Like, go about your normal marketing business, talk to politicians, talk to celebrities, and then just, you know, whatever you talk about, bring back to us. That plot is introduced... And then uh, uh, completely abandoned. Yeah, that goes nowhere. There is no that reason goes, for it to be there. That goes nowhere. Like, there's no hints at it initially. Like, there's never like you're you're blackmailing me. Blah 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 blah. He just has a conversation with Jeffrey Tambor where he's like, "I really don't like being a spy." There's one flashback to him being a spy, and then that's it. It never's brought up again, and it just sort of disappears. But they make a really big deal out of it for like two minutes. One of the things I do like from this flashback sequence, though, is that they go through listing a bunch of third world countries and they label Russia as one of them. 
Yeah, they're like Brazil, Kenya, and Russia. And I was like, those are not all in the same group. Nope. I, like, they are now. Ken- Kenya is worlds away from Brazil. <laughs> Which is pretty similar to Russia at this point now, though. Yeah, and it's just like, well, you can't... Ha- like, that's just... That didn't make any sense. <laughs> no. But I found it funny. So, it was funny. So once we come back from the flashback, Misha, his name is, he gets uh, he gets a new contract to make this makeover show about a charming, overweight girl who is going to get, like, you know, full makeover plus plastic surgery, just complete new change. And where does it go from there? They either just, like, you know, start casting, start looking into it, and he's like, that's great, we got a new job. Right, and that's also, like, there was an... That was, the, the evil plan is, from yeah. the, 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 the villain of the movie... We find out kind afterwards... Of, we find out afterwards, but it doesn't really matter, is they're going to have this plastic surgery makeover show to make this woman go from fat to thin. They are going to deliberately screw up the procedure so she's put into a coma. Then they are going to use that to market the burger. So as not, not as much that, but they're going to... They're going to use that as the point of, like, why are we demonizing fatness? This girl was fine until she tried to get thin... Well, it's not just, like, it's not so much body acceptance as it's, like, they want people to be anti-being thin. They want people to be, to want to be fat. Well, so this is the first step in the transition to that. Right, there are, right, there are, so, so she goes into the coma, the, the, the woman on the show goes into a coma, and there's a whole big, everybody's pissed, the whole country's enraged. Candlelight but vigils, the, news stories, everything. Right, everything. But in this world, instead of being mad at the creator of the show, or just the show in general, um, the police openly beat the guy behind the advertising of the show. Oh, like, he so walks good. out of it. He walks out of his home, and there is a crowd of people for him. Be, like, I guarantee... How the fuck do you find out who's behind the marketing of a show? That, nobody Google. knows that. Nobody knows... Google. <laughs> nobody knows that. Nor does anybody care. Like, when a show is stupid, people aren't like, this show is so bad, I'm mad at the marketing firm who promoted this show. No, you're mad at the doctor for fucking up the surgery. You're mad at the person who made the show. But instead, the police are like, did you market this? And they just beat the shit out of him in the streets. So this is one of many examples where they really trump up the role of marketing mostly for the purpose of the movie. Right. In this world, like, they almost sort of play it up like there is this dystopia where marketing runs the world, which you can get into, yeah, it does. To a degree, but not like in this world. In this world, marketing is almost like another, uh, like another part of the government. Yeah, so it's really interesting. I feel like, I feel like that is probably the fingerprints of the Russian filmmakers on that, which kind of just shows their perspective. Which sort of was scary to me, where it was like. <laughs> A huge anti-capitalist movie from Russians being like, wasn't it great back in the day when there was only one version of everything? When there was one brand, the government brand, and you waited in line for it, like a patriot. Right, even though in the beginning they show a thing where they show you how that was not good. Nope. But this is distinctively like a marketing is bad, multiple products flooding the market are bad, people wanting things are bad. You should not want. So after Misha is arrested, we go and back to, to, a, and sent to a gulag. And sent with to the gulags. What appears, and what appears to be no trial. <laughs> uh, I certainly didn't see one. I didn't see one. And suddenly he's just in a prison from the 1890s. I mean, Russia. So, <laughs> so we go back to the Hitler of marketing, Plotting more stuff in the marketing bunker. I just where... spilled water all over my computer. <laughs> <laughs> he goes back to the Hitler of marketing. Plotting his marketing from the bunker of marketing, where he manufactures a news story, and you just you hear the news people repeat it word for word, and then you you go to a, a news viewer who just repeats exactly what he wants, and so further kind of just trumping up marketing but it's just spreading the demonization of thinness and you know making that transition into fat being okay and then fat being popular and then after that we have misha just busting into george bluth senior's office uh just bitching about everything and blaming everything on him 
Meanwhile, uh, my first question is, how'd you get out of prison? They, he bails him out. Yeah, he... Jeffrey, he Jeffrey Tambor bails him out of jail. He does do that. They show that. But this is when, I just have in my notes, this movie is all over the fucking place, because at this point, we've had, like, five flashbacks. Yeah. To things that really aren't affecting the story at all. It just, it keeps going into, this movie really wants you to believe that this guy is the best at marketing in the world. Yeah. And they keep having these flashbacks where they show him just doing marketing magic for no reason. And then they show, like, he used his marketing to get a person killed. Yeah, so... Uh, in the first flashback where we talk, where we show his little vodka stands, that was his first debut of marketing. He uh, he's talking to whatever his face is about how he's like, yeah, you remember how I'm supposed to be a spy and I'm supposed to just feed you stuff and you don't act on it. I knew that you were going to act on it, so I fed you that that guy was a drug dealer because he fired me afterwards before giving me a raise, and you ended up leaking that to a bunch of mobsters. And he ended up killed. So I've been playing you, bitch. Which causes him to have a heart attack. Yeah, the guy, he, that, that re- revelation of something that he probably in reality wouldn't be upset about. Because yeah. he, they hint he works at the CIA. If a bunch of Russian mob guys kill one guy, like the CIA is going to go like, yeah, that's Russia. But this guy is scared to death of that and dies. And now that the world, uh, uh, the world, Russia, um, hates marketing... His girlfriend leaves, this guy's dead, and he flees Moscow, and we suddenly flash forward six years into the future, where he is a cow herder in rural Russia somewhere. It's interesting how we even find out that, because his girlfriend's just chasing him down forever. She's, like, driving down a Russian road, and there's a bunch of cows crossing it, because cow imagery and because russia just has no paved streets (laughs) and and then she looks over and suddenly she realizes the herder moving the cows along is misha and she's like oh shit runs out to him once they end up back in civilization we see that the burger chain has implemented be yourself burger ads showing a very fat uh model and just you know, we're kind of left to assume that the fat is good culture has progressed six years. Oh, we hear a hip-hop song about it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, the whole soundtrack for the next little while uh, is full of songs that glorify fatness and overeating, which I thought was like a nice little touch. And not just like, not like, you know, any kind of Nicki Minaj song where she's like, I got a big ass, whatever. No, this is like... You should be fat. Like, I'm talking like you should be almost dead fat. Like Yeah, the song is like, some... fat is sexy or something like that. And then later and on, there's another song of like, I just want to eat and I want to keep fucking eating and I'm never going to stop eating. They even go, I, I tried to pause it, I couldn't tell what it was, but they even go so far to like, kids want to buy a superhero doll and the superhero is like morbidly obese. Yeah, and you there's see like... that when Misha meets his son. Uh, who is well, just fat as shit? Well, the son is. I hate that kid. But we we, right. we gotta we gotta pull it back because we are skipping the 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 changing point of the film, where marketing Hitler talks about the no his no, no the cow sacrifice. They were not. Oh right, yeah. We haven't. Yeah, there you, we just cannot yet. skip that. So he go he he goes his girlfriend finds him she's like you should come back you should come back with me and he's like no I'm living out here. Right. So then he has a vision where the celestial cow god we find out that it is that at the beginning we don't know that until the very end. Um tells him to commit a ritualistic cow sacrifice where he builds a giant sacrificial altar then waits for one of his cows to turn red through magic. He leads it to the altar, kills it with an axe, covers the whole thing in its blood, burns the altar down with the red cow in it, then <laughs> bathes in its ashes. He, on the sacrificial altar, passes out, and this ends movie one. And then the second movie, <laughs> and then the second movie starts. Because the whole p- beginning part of this movie has just been, sure, there's an evil marketing guy, and there's all this marketing stuff. This movie gets fucking bananas now. 
Yeah, it, it really leaves any sense of grounding. Um, so once he... So he meets his son, and the son's first reaction is, I don't think that's daddy. And you're looking at, and like, this skinny woman and this skinny guy and this fat son, and you're like, I'm inclined to agree that's not your father. This, this fat little turd, this fat little kid is, like, the most annoying thing. And, his, and like, Misha, like, tries to warm up to the kid. He's like, oh, I love you, daddy. Like, if I met that kid and he was my son, I'd be like, what a fucking turd. Like, yep, like, <laughs> we're done here. But, We're done here. <laughs> so after Misha wakes up from his brief coma of like, oh my god, I just burned a cow, he uh, he starts seeing things first with his girlfriend and then on his son, um, little kind of balloon things that come they, off of. They are them not, and they are not little. Well, so they they vary in size. They tend to be maybe like two to three feet long when they're pretty in check. And these, and what he is, and he, and these creatures are like, like they float around, they grow off the back of your neck, and they make like weird monster sounds. We're like, <laughs> they make all these weird sounds. Yeah. They like, they stare at Misha, like implying that they like know he's there. And yeah. what they are is the physical embodiments of people's desires for specific brands. Yeah. And this movie doesn't imply that these are like symbolic. It's implying that these like are there. Are are actually there and exist in another plane that we just can't see. So and we want... also can't touch which because when he first sees them, he kind of waves his hand out and he passes and it passes through them which kind of goes on to show that they're immaterial. As the movie progresses, it's sort of played out like these things are monsters, even though they don't yeah. do anything. Well, I can't wait to get to the part where we realize how monstrous they are, so let's... Right. Well, what, what happens is, so if you want something from a brand, it starts to grow on you until you your desire is so big that the weird little brand monster sort of like pushes you to buy the thing, then when you buy it, it breaks off from the back of your neck and floats into the giant larger brand monster that exists on the roofs of these stores? Yes. And what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck is that? What is that? So, that, doesn't make, that doesn't make sense. So the first time we really see that happening... The son is just being your your classic, like, shitty little kid where he's like, I want a fucking, fucking little, cheeseburger. Little turd of a kid. And so the worm thing on his back, like, earlier on the girlfriend and on the son, it was, like, maybe two, three feet long. So now it's a good eight to ten feet long and, like, three feet in diameter. And so it's just huge. And it's kind of getting a pull towards the burger place. It's trying, yeah, it's trying to, like, pull the kid towards the burger place. Well, it's not trying to pull him, because the kid doesn't react to it as if there's a weight right, on because, his back. Right, because they can't but, affect the world, also making it go, like, why is this a problem? Because they can't do anything. Exactly. But, uh, well, so it obviously seems to be more mental. And so the I, kid... I guess. So the kid's just bitching at mom for, like, seven rubles or whatever... In the uh, fucking whiniest voice ever, too. Like, Mom, I want a cheeseburger. And she's like, you need to be nice to me. And he's like, fuck you, Mom, get me money. And she's like, okay. Yeah, right, he's just the <laughs> shittiest little kid. And, and she's the <laughs> worst mom. She is the worst mom. She's raising a fat little turd and doing nothing about it. <laughs> hey, Zach, fat is okay now. Oh, that's right, I forgot. <laughs> so... So he goes to the he goes was there to the a little, marketing like, meeting? was there a marketing meeting where they made being an asshole cool too like probably. you still have, your kids should have manners anyway but yeah so he goes to this counter there which honestly looks like it was designed for children because it's like right at the kid's height he throws down his money comes back with the cheeseburger as he's eating the thing like eighty percent of the worm just kind of breaks off into a giant balloon. And floats up, and that's where we first see, like, the mega monster on top of the burger chain, and his, like, chunk of worm goes up and joins it, and then we pan around and see the city has, like, 20, 30 different breeds of monsters, just everybody on their roof. 
Did did you catch the thing that the kid has? They don't show it a lot, but it's sort of I thought was this interesting implied thing because fat is popular. He has a lunch tray connected to his backpack that hangs off the front of him, so he lowers the tray down so he can lay put his food on it and eat while he walks. I didn't I didn't even notice that. That's amazing. Yeah, he has like and you see a couple other people have it. It's not a big part. But because in this world where fat is so popular, it's just like they have created backpacks where it's like, hey, fatty, you can just put your food on here and you don't have to like be like hindered with holding your French fries while you're shoving your cheeseburger in your big fat face. That's one of the things that I really like about this movie. They do. They they have the fat superhero. They have those weird tray backpacks. It's kind of like the charging stations and electric cars and Watchmen where... Yeah. Where it's like, oh, Dr. Manhattan can synthesize lithium, so now everything's electric just because before we couldn't, but now it can be. And so it's like, it's a nice little universe touch. They get back to the apartment where Misha just kind of dumps out all the stuff on his girlfriend of like, so I'm seeing these monsters... And uh... <laughs> and he and he is like surprised, and she naturally is like, if you don't want to like live here, that's fine. You don't have to make up the stupidest story <laughs> I've ever heard in my life. And he's like, no, no, you have to believe me. Like, why would you think anybody would ever believe you? This doesn't make any sense. And then what are you gonna go like? No, 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 no. A celestial cow god came to me in a dream, and it told me to bathe myself in the ashes of a magic cow. And they go like, uh huh. And <laughs> like, this is insane. <laughs> and like, that's why, why I can't stay with you and your son. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> and that's why I have to leave. Like, she'd just be like, now I want you to leave. <laughs> right. So he, so his background apparently is in like history, and he goes on a thing of like the original marketer was Lenin. He marketed the mentality of, like, people wanting more and the whole idea of communism and his propaganda machine was just, like, marketing in its origins. And so people used to make brands with their purchases, and now the brands are shaping people using marketing. Which is true to a degree, but... But as, Those, as always, it's hyped up in this movie. Right, and it's just like, well, are these brands, like, monsters? And that's where I started to think, like, okay, this is supposed to be, like, a symbolic representation of brands. But it's not. They are, time and time again, shown to be tangible things that are actually there. Yes, which we were getting to the point where we get to talk about that. Oh, uh, the best part of the movie that is at the end of this two-hour movie for five minutes? <laughs> yes. So, <laughs> so throughout this whole thing, though, the girlfriend is pretty down to earth, and he's like, you know, all these people for are no, just... For no reason. She has no reason to be. And yet. But she, uh, she, like, he's going, like, all these stupid people are running out trying to be happy when they're being told what to be happy. And she's like, people are running around trying to be happy because they want to be happy. And... <laughs> right okay, there's this massive marketing conspiracy, so then what? <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Like, like, okay, they all went to this evil marketing Darth Vader on a Polynesian island, and they're like, I want to sell more of my product. And they went, okay, and they sold more of their product. And so... Who cares? Yeah, and so like, she, like... In the end, she's she's pretty reasonable, so I end up liking her character a lot. So we we end up with him downtown again, and we get a pretty sweet shot, uh, a pan up of like people walking by with all their monsters on their shoulders, all the big monsters on the buildings, and all of a sudden, when he's looking around, his girlfriend's like little monsters kind of get in his face, and so he shoves her back to you know get her away because he's freaking out. And so that's kind of the chink in their relationship armor. And in the background, you first start hearing reports of a uh, a pandemic level virus. And so I'm starting to wonder, like, are these the little monsters starting to affect people, or? Oh, what? you thought that you thought that this was going to finally break out into the battle where like people see the monsters and fight them. Exactly. I thought the monsters were finally going to start affecting people, which would be interesting. Yeah, that uh, in we do instead, not end up going in that direction. <laughs> instead, uh, we have 
these action-packed scenes of boardroom meetings. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like they, but they play the music that they play at these boardroom meetings. You're su- makes you 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 realize you're supposed to feel excited or intrigued. Instead, you're watching a boardroom meeting. It's that's all a, that's happening. It's a conspiracy theorist wet dream. <laughs> but a conspiracy theory that nobody has. There's nobody out there going like McDonald's is actually part of like an otherworldly monster that nobody can see, and that monster is fighting a Burger King monster. So like, nobody. So that much, obviously not. But the part of the boardrooms where it's like, well, we could market or we could start changing Killing pop people. culture. Which, which ends up coming in the form of killing people. And so so here's, so here's he's back in his hotel. The girlfriend is like, so that freak out you had earlier, me and my son are going to leave. We would like it if you moved out. This is just getting to be too much. During this, he ends up getting an offer to work with a vegetarian uh, Chinese food chain and start you know, marketing for them, because right now, obviously, the market is very pro-beef, very pro-fat, pretty at odds with vegetarians, so they're looking for a marketing heavy hitter. But my problem with this is, last I heard, he's been gone for six years. Yeah, longer. (laughs) Yes, six years plus whatever time he's had with his girlfriend to rebuild their relationship. So, just out of the blue, they're like, hey, you know that washed-up has-been that no one's ever heard about for six years and might, for all we know, be dead? Let's, uh, let's hire him. I think he has a really good nose for the market right now. <laughs> and they, so they hire him, and yeah. he is like, you don't know what his plan is, yeah. but essentially his plan is to, like, grow another brand monster from a giant brand egg... Like, literally a giant egg containing a monster in it. We didn't know that. We just saw the egg. That was laid by, what, the Celestial Cow God? Like, what? I don't even know. Cause when he, so when he first goes to the building for their first marketing meeting, the egg is roughly the size of, like, their little neon building topper. Um, and so he goes and he says, like, you know, everybody's really pro beef right now. We got to change that mentality. My proposal is we sell a virus detector that you can put in your beef. And because we're just going to spread the rumors that beef is full of viruses and you need this. Otherwise, you'll die. And they, and they make a commercial for it and everything, and the commercial is really well. And then he tells, like, his assistant, he's like, good. Right at the end of the commercial, put the slogan, test your beef or test your death. Taste your and death. I'm like, taste your death? And I'm like, that's a terrible slogan. Uh, a- not for a meat virus detector. I- <laughs> Look, were you blessed by the celestial cow god with marketing powers? Was Do you have he, any right to judge him? Was he? We don't even know if he was. <laughs> I think at this point it's safe to assume he was. I mean, well, he's always had superpowers. Super muscle so powers. his the plan to have uh, the beef testers uh, fails because people are like beef's fine and like everyone's like like why are they doing this when beef is fine? So then the like the Ministry of something something in the Russian government proves beef is okay by eating a hamburger and on TV. On TV, and then that must have been the most boring 15 minutes of news ever, just watching a man eat a hamburger. And, like, did they just show a clip, or did they show him eating the entire burger, and was he saying anything, or is he just sitting there in front of TV eating a hamburger? It just showed him eating the hamburger. It just showed him eating the hamburger. And then he dies the next day. And they never say this, but does Misha kill this guy? I, every part of me thinks that he had the killing arranged, because... The, the meeting with the six triads of vegetarian... <laughs> the Yakuza. Yeah, the vegetarian Yakuza. It goes exactly almost a word-for-word, shot-for-shot remake of the meeting with the fast food people and the other marketing guy. And you again, you hear him go, how far are you willing to go? And the Chinese people, in the most robotic, obnoxiously broken English ever say, we will go as far as we can inside the law. And he comes back with the usual, that's not far enough. And they go, all right, well, I guess fucking whatever you want to do. This guy, that guy had to have been, like, somebody read him his lines phonetically. 
And he did not understand. Yeah, exactly. And that's like, that's just another part of the movie where it's like, the movie, the cinematography is great. Most of the writing is good. But then you have moments like that where it's like, who did this casting? Who wrote this part? Like, you couldn't, you couldn't find a Chinese guy who spoke English? Like, yeah, this right? guy, like, there was just somebody who said, like, just looked at him and stared at him and went, we are willing to do anything in the law. And he went, has the willing to do blah, 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 blah. Like, I know that's probably a terribly racist impression. But that's how this guy sounds because he can't yeah. speak English. He's, <laughs> like, it's just, it's so bad. And it's like, did they just leave portions of this movie up to, like, a set of interns? <laughs> I feel like they were trying to cut all the corners they could to save up for their monster CGI. Which, I mean, was pretty low budget, but... But, I mean, they had to, right? Because like, where Because this was a big, like, not... It wasn't a popular movie, but, like, this was in, intended to yeah. be a popular movie. This, this wasn't done in anyone's garage. No. And so, obviously, him trying to do a vegetarian chain put him at odds with the beef culture, as we said, and so the prime minister, or the minister of something, goes on, eats the beef, dies. And he, and so instantly, just like overnight, is beef safe, yada yada, vegetarian restaurants pop up everywhere, and they're like, hey, no beef, no problem. So as, as this culture spreads, he goes back to the building over and over again and watches the egg pulsate and grow. Until it hatches into a vegetarian restaurant dragon. Which, to this point... None of the other ones had. They'd all been stationary on top of their buildings. And so right. I just, I got so excited watching this. <laughs> well, it's also, it's like when that happens too. I didn't even know how to react. No, I didn't either. You're like, well, what, like that happens and you're like, okay, well now what? Yeah, right. Like, <laughs> right. Like the, the, the giant monster hatches and he's like, yeah, my plan worked. And I'm like, for what? <laughs> for what is this? <laughs> So, what is this going to do? So we, we don't have any idea what goes on, but right now the monster first flies at Misha a few times, so it's like, oh my god, is it going to kill him? And then it. F- but he knows they can't touch him. We, he exactly. Like- and he reacts still like his life is in danger, even though having proven on multiple occasions that these are immaterial. Also, we, we haven't really described these monsters as much. We know that they're balloony looking things, but they don't look like. This is the like, first one that looked awesome. This is the first one that looked like anything. Everything else is sort of just like when the big monster fight happens, they all sort of have teeth. But like before that, they're all just like these amorphous blobs. They don't look like anything. They don't have like eyes or like a face really. And then suddenly there's a fucking dragon hatching yeah. out of an egg that is apparently the end game to his master plan. Like <laughs> <laughs> There's really no other way to put that. <laughs> <laughs> You're just like, well, what? what? <laughs> You're left there just going, like, what, what is this scene after this one? <laughs> like, Yep, like, okay, so we've, uh, we've started a whole new movie, haven't we? <laughs> oh, yeah, this is when mo- the, the third movie of the three movies starts. <laughs> and the dragon flies to the roof of the burger place and just starts ripping up the burger monster. <laughs> <laughs> and Just that's when you're tail like slashing it to pieces, mouth tearing off chunks of it. So that's when you're like, so these things like interact with each other now? Like they never did that. Before like, there would be multiple ones coexisting peacefully on someone's back and like all throughout the city they'd just be all there. It wasn't there was no interaction. It was all just, you know, balloons. And now yeah, suddenly like, one just murders. <laughs> Well, it's also not like these, like, there are competing brands all over the place. They have the Apple stand-in, they have the Microsoft stand-in. Yeah. Why are those monsters not fighting? Well, we'll I don't know why they weren't before, but we'll get to <laughs> when they, they do. they certainly will now. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, so the egg hatches, and then we flash to um, Hitler's secret marketing bunker. Where he's got Heinrich Himmler and Goering there, and they're all like, oh no, the, this uh, vegetarian fast food place is so popular, how do we make the burger popular again? He's like, well, gentlemen, I'm not going to lie to you, it's not going to be easy, but I have a plan. And then he's struck by lightning and he vaporizes. And the end of end, and that just ends his character. <laughs> <laughs> he's just gone forever, just like Obi-Wan style. Yeah, not, not like hit by lightning and dead, hit by lightning and then his clothes just fall on the ground. And I'm like, did he get, like, transported to, like, another dimension? Like, He's now part of the Celestial Cow God. 
or something, and like never explain. They they are sort of building this guy up as he is the antagonist of this movie, and there is no arc or loop. He is just the bad guy gets struck by lightning, and then there's still twenty minutes left in this movie. Yeah, I wasn't <laughs> sure how they were going to fill that. But. They did well. <laughs> so, so Mikhail, in a scene, again, very similar to one where we saw with Marketing Hitler, he has a whole teleconference on TV. He's raising a toast, like, look at, look at what we did, huh? I built you a I fucking a, brand. I made a dragon, and everyone's like, what? And he's like, oh, that's never, nothing, never mind. <laughs> anyway. I- <laughs> and so then after that, he goes on to give his speech of, like, this is the whole new paradigm of marketing. It's not just pushing your own brand. It's destroying everyone else's. Even if that means actually killing people. <laughs> Which just totally not off limits. And so... <laughs> not, in, not in this new marketing strategy. And, Murder is actually step three. <laughs> <laughs> step four, profit. And then, right. <laughs> and then... And then he delivered... As he's delivering this speech, you're seeing just a whole new proliferation of monsters from each different brand. And meanwhile, uh, these are all just, like, Chinese knockoffs, essentially, of other brands, like Yeppel and Whatever Soft and Coca-Cola, whatever that it's, one was. It's, it's called Soda Soda. Soda Soda. And the like. All these monsters, and he's like, I'm going to show you how to give your marketing teeth I'm going to show you how to destroy another brand. And I'm going to got... turn your brands into monsters that will fight in the sky and kill each other. And everyone's like, what? And he's like, oh, that's right, never mind. Oh, right, um, that's right, only I can see that, and it's going to be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he gets all these corporations, I'm assuming, behind the back of each other. Probably. And they just make them so they're super violent. We never see uh, all of these companies murder a person, but it, it has to be implied that every company on the face of the earth now is responsible for at least one like authentic first degree murder. <laughs> we'll say it average it averages out to one point eight murders per company. Seems like. <laughs> and then we cut to the symbolic version of these brands fighting themselves yeah. with a giant monster fight in the sky above Moscow. Where, like, you've got giant, like, blimp-sized things wrecking little dragon things, and then tons of little, like, basketball-sized guys are just tearing chunks out of larger ones. And this is where you can take his speech literally, like, now the brands literally have teeth. They all have teeth and claws, and they are monsters, and they are eating each other and getting swallowed, and then the one that it swallows eats its way out of it, and then they're like... Oh, I love that one. ...crashing into buildings and fighting on, like, tops of skyscrapers like they're King Kongs, and there's dragons, like, breathing fire and shit, and then you're just like, this is fucking crazy! Yeah, right? I would have watched two hours of that. Why was the movie not that? And that is when this movie is sort of like they live, kind of, where it gets really awesome. But then they the monster it down fight down to earth. And the monster fight happens for two minutes, and then it's just over. Yeah. And then the movie's pretty much over. And then they kind of wrap it up. So he, so first, it's kind of obvious at this point. He's like, I'm just going to have these things against each other until they destroy themselves, and it's just not sustainable. And then, like, maybe that will just pacify everything. And he, meanwhile, he's in his office. He's got, like, all the major brands on a thing in his wall, and he's just crossing them off. His office, if you've seen it in earlier shots, was entirely glass. So he's watching. People are able to just look in there and watch him just cross off companies as they go bankrupt. And no one's like, sir, is that, what are you what? Oh, that's my monster hit list. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And they're like, when's the next campaign due? Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> and so, so in any case, this whole time he's trying to get back in touch with the girlfriend to win her back. After a certain point, we hear in the television in the background, there's a big vote up in the Senate, or the Kremlin. Um, Putin's den. Putin's den. Um, and so... Unfortunately, we weren't able to cast Putin for the president of Russia in this, but <laughs> as great as that would have been. He was busy that week. <laughs> Riding horses. He was or, taking over uh, the Balkans slowly. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
<laughs> no, that's separatist group sec. And uh, <laughs> oh, that's right, my bad. So, so there's a big vote coming up where they're going to where they're proposing to ban advertising because it's kind of getting out that everyone's murdering everyone for the sake of their brand. And so they're like, advertising is like the least trusted group of individuals since like to the point, to the point where people are like car bombing. Yeah. Adver- advertising firms like car bombing. There is rioting in the streets. Yeah. People are breaking into advertising firms and killing people. Just like hitting them in the head with a baseball bat until they have died. And it's almost sort of like government approved. <laughs> yeah, right. Like they're they're definitely standing back because you don't see the cops doing anything. Well, the cops beat him in the beginning. They're helping, right? And so he's calling the girlfriend, and he's and so he kind of comes out with his whole plan. He's like, I tried to get marketing so competitive that it was banned, and then the government didn't. Then she kind of comes to him or whatever, and they're in his building, and then his marketing firm gets hit by mobs. Like, the writing is on the wall, and he's backed into a corner with, like, a hundred people in the lobby of his place just ripping it up. When and someone, some, of them literal, some of them literally have guns. And one person just empties a clip into the air, and it's like, oh my god, are they just going to rally everybody to kill him? But it's like, <laughs> right. no, 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 the president's on TV! Everyone shut up! <laughs> and, like... And then he comes on and he's like, we've established a coalition of 150 world nations and we're going to ban advertising. Oh, I missed that part. Yeah. That's I what I'm saying. Part. Like, the, it it actually, he does end up changing the world. I, and, I, missed the, I missed the coalition part. I thought this was just in Russia. Oh, yeah, well, that knowledge, then, yeah, I guess he does change the world. He does. And then, like, no mob ever, the mob quietly disperses having gotten what they wanted. <laughs> right, they're like, oh, well, I guess that's it. Right? They and don't go, it. like, hey, we can keep looting and stuff, because right now we're kind of in a state of anarchy, so, like, free computers. Nope, we're good. Let's go home. And they, cause this is and Russia. then they just, not only, like, let's go home, but then they just sort of leave him for dead. They leave Misha for dead on the ground. It's not their problem. <laughs> not, the riot's over. It's done now. Right? We Marketing's over. You know, fuck that guy. And... <laughs> and so... Like the next day, with this marketing ban, they stri- like not only they are they rip tearing down bill- everything, they rip down every billboard. They go to people's cars that have like the- hood ornaments on them and cut off like Mercedes brands. They bri- and then give people tickets. Like you already cut it off. Why do you got to give them a ticket now? Right. That they- was the weirdest thing. Like not only just taking down advertisements, but erasing brands themselves. Yeah, they are, like, cars that just have, like, little, like, placards on the back that say, like, Hyundai or Ford. They're ripping those off and smelting them down for bullets to be used in Ukraine while they slowly (laughs) take it over. (laughs) And, like, now, like, not only is advertising banned, but things can't have brand names. How do you even know what you're buying? Yeah, you can't even, like, and you can't even pretend, like, oh, you know, it's red brand or blue brand. It's, like, you just, you have car. I guess, <laughs> I guess this, at the end of the movie, they just go back to communism. <laughs> That's what I wrote. I wrote, so, in the end, when the sun rises, Misha's okay, it's a brand new day, it's a brand new Russia that is controlled by a dystopian-like government, more Soviet-like than anything else, where there are no brands and... Uh, people apparently live in fear of getting a ticket if, like, they have a Pepsi bottle that doesn't have the Pepsi label turned off, but right. torn off. Exactly. It's a rigid communist society, just like Russia always dreamed. Also, one of my favorite parts is, like, earlier in the movie when, like, the sign of Misha finally making it was him getting a used Mercedes. It's very, it's very Soviet. He's like, I got an old car from 15 years ago. It's like, oh man, that guy's really going someplace. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like now, now we are essentially, which makes me go like, maybe Putin wasn't in this movie because he was controlling this movie, and he's like, this will, like, this will sort of get people in the mentality of what I'm trying to bring back here. Exactly, like the entire movie just seemed so very Russian in its nature, like, and that's what I kind of like about a lot of these foreign films. It. Uh, that we since we always seem to end up doing those like it 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 has a very different perspective that you wouldn't get in an american film like they wouldn't demonize 
marketing and corporations as much, I don't think. N- well, no, I don't think they would, but it's also it's also scary in the sense where they're not just like, oh, capitalism isn't as great as we you know hoped it would be. It's like, man, wasn't communism great? Wasn't that great? We don't want to go full communism, but why don't we have a little bit of communism? Come on, guys. Just, <laughs> wasn't that great? Wasn't that great? Come on. And it's it's like how far does the ripping off like the, the the eliminating of brand names go? Like, can you not go into a store and say, "Give me a Dr Pepper or a Pepsi"? Do you have to just go, "Give me a soda"? And they you just get whatever they have or whatever labelless uh, uh, button they press, and then they just you get that one. Right, you get the one Soviet. <laughs> right, and like you said, it's like, oh, you you want to buy a car? Okay, you have car now. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So thankfully, the movie saves itself the problem of tackling those difficult questions and by, just ends. and and well, it saves itself by but tackling those it does, difficult questions with. The narrator coming back on, the female voice who, like we said, has been sort of inter- intermittent, and she has some sort of line like you'd have in a fairy tale where she might as well go, and they all lived happily ever after. Under Putin's and then we, regime. Under Putin's regime. And then we f- pan up to the sky, and we see that the narrator is the celestial cow god who winks, and then the screen cuts to black, and you go, wait a minute, what the fuck was that? And then it's just you. That it's, you don't get to know. <laughs> nope, that's it. That is that is the big payoff of the whole movie. So I'm like, is this the celestial cow gods doing ultimately? I I couldn't even answer that because <laughs> I initially I was like, oh, you know, was the cow gods plan to get rid of marketing? But just. I, I couldn't even say with certainty. To get rid of marketing, but like it is th- like it's a pro Soviet cow, and definitely. So she was waiting for the chosen one who would bring balance to the marketing force to be <laughs> to be born because he had the right amount of marketing midi chlorians, and then she made him see these ad monsters so he could grow his own ad monsters, and it's like it doesn't. It, 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 uh, I was hoping you'd stay with the Star Wars parallels a little longer, but <laughs> it's kind of hard to because this movie just goes in its own direction so much. And Putin is Emperor Palpatine. <laughs> exactly. But uh, so moving into overall impressions, um, since you had seen this movie long ago and you kind of told me about it and saying it was about marketing, like my initial thoughts, like I've seen, I've seen They Live and I've seen Mad Men. And so I was wondering, like, how... Because those are, like, the two big juggernauts in terms of, like, pop culture takes on marketing. Right. And And it's being controlled, ultimately, through, like... Through one force or another. Right. And so, uh, in the end, obviously, way more they live. But uh, still, it's it's very much its own thing. It... uh, (laughs) It goes so far off into left field with the marketing monsters that feed the bigger marketing monsters and then go to war. Like, I, it really has no parallels. And, like, that is the whole reason I watched this movie two years ago when it came out. Because if you look at the trailer, the trailer makes it seem like there's going to be 20, 30 minutes of whatever. And then all of a sudden, he is fighting monsters. Because, like you said... When you pulled it up on Netflix, the little promotional poster is a silhouette of Misha with two guns, like in an action movie pose surrounded by monsters. Yeah, just two pistols akimbo and just surrounded by monsters. He never even touches a gun in this movie. In fact, there's only one gun in the entire movie, and it's the gun held by the rioter who uses it to silence the riot. He... He doesn't fight these monsters, even though he sort of acts like he can at times. Because that's the thing. It's stri- like the second you see a monster, 25 seconds later, we establish you cannot touch it. They cannot touch you. They cannot do you physical harm. But there are multiple times in this movie where he is in, like, in fear of his life. For these things that cannot touch him. For these things that cannot harm him, nor are they harming anybody. Well, I'll, I'll go into my review real quick. Let's hear it. I get... I give this movie fucking, uh, well, it's, it's October, so I give it three ghosts out of ten ghosts. And <laughs> it's, it's just, it's, it is Mad Men for an hour, 
and then with no transition, suddenly it's they live. Yeah. There is no there is no cohesive reason for these two things to connect. The first half of the movie doesn't even hint at there is like, ooh, there's things you don't understand, young Misha. Maybe one day when you become a Jedi Knight. None of that happened. He just all of a sudden is can see these things. They do these two stories do not mesh. And then even when he comes back, it's not all monsters. Now it is Still, the marketing drama that was there before, but with monsters just thrown in there. With that said, the monsters are really cool. When the monsters fight, it is it is insanity on the screen. It is the to best the point, part of the movie. But it is the best two minutes of a two-hour movie. And ultimately, like, the monsters don't really, like, aren't really an issue. The brands are. They aren't actually doing anything themselves as monsters, which makes their entire presence in this movie really not matter. You could have had this movie taken out the monsters, and it would be way less interesting to watch and way less cool, but the the story would not change. It really wouldn't. And again, we had the whole thing with the dra- like the dragon, and suddenly they have teeth now, and like and like it. it imp- yeah, it's just it's it, <laughs> for a movie about advertising. This movie was very falsely advertised. <laughs> <laughs> it really was because I don't know because I remember the trailer that made me want to watch it, and the trailer like he has an axe in his hand, and then they show the thing with the guns, and then there's like the whole trailer is just monsters, and then when you watch it, it is not that at all. <laughs> Well, it sounds like you bought into the marketing after the person who failed to kill the monsters was killed, and, and then, then I went on a and then I went on a riot, and then I went into Paramount Pictures uh, studio, and I just started vandalizing everything, and nobody was helping me. I thought it was weird, but <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So so in the end, my overall thoughts. Um, I liked the movie. I really did. I would watch it again, and oh god, why? And I would recommend it to some people, not most. Um, what? But tell me, what in this movie made you want to watch it again? Other than the monsters, you can't say the monsters because they're such a small part. Overall, I think like I think Misha and the girl. Like when you told me there was going to be a a love interest, generally I hate that in the movies. I think they did pretty well. I thought the girl was a pretty good character. Um, Misha was pretty annoying. I thought he was all right. Um, overall, it's not. It's definitely not a great movie. It's really not. Um, but it is pretty good. It's pretty passable. There's there's enough there's enough of the bones of a good movie here to where I think it gets away with some of the dumb moments where like the guy who clearly has never spoken a word of English before the camera was turned on for that Chinese scene, like that that was obviously a flaw. And there were some other dumb things where like things were said the way no one would say them. Um, but in between that was a movie. And so I would probably give it more in the five or six range out of ten. Definitely not seven. You know, definitely not completely passable. But it was pretty solid, considering it was, it was probably made on the budget of like a hundred million dollars, most of which went to bribes. <laughs> <laughs> the first hour was way too boring for me to to suggest it to people. I I couldn't. That's why I was playing a game during it. <laughs> Well, um, so we could go into suggestions, and I think both of our suggestions is probably going to be the same movie. Uh, probably They Live, I imagine. If you want to, if you want to see this concept done way better, way more interesting, and with so uh, much e- more escalation, so much more escalation, and you know what? Honestly, stupider than this movie. It really but is. works, but it works so much better. Watch They Live. It's also a hard, It's also kind of a spooky alien movie. So it's a good October kind of movie. It's also a Netflix streaming. Um, it is it that movie gets so crazy, but in a good way. And also, they sort of hint at the themes that they bring up later. It does. Imagine that. Uh, best five minute, uh, uncut five minute uh, fist fight in any movie ever. <laughs> <laughs> just five minutes, five raw minutes of two guys beating the shit out of each other over one guy wants another guy to wear a pair of sunglasses and he doesn't want to do it, so they almost kill each other. <laughs> Basically the family guy chicken fight. <laughs> Basically. But, but yeah. that was branded. Got anything else you want to say, my friend? Uh I think there's only one thing left to say. This movie was a hot dog. That it was.
which we have yet to establish is a good thing or not, <laughs> and what exactly it means, uh, we'll get to that one day. <laughs> I don't think we will. <laughs> Probably. I don't see it. I don't either. Um, if by some reason you listen to this podcast, which doesn't seem like anybody is, <laughs> if you listen to this, uh, rate and review us on iTunes, because I hear that that helps it get found more. Um, uh, if you want to uh, email us, uh, hate mail specifically, you can email us at moviehotdog at gmail.com uh, or Twitter us at moviehotdog. Uh, Facebook, this movie was a hot dog. And, oh, that blog. I keep reading that and I don't go to it. I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> as soon as we end this, I forget that I have that there. <laughs> I either have to delete this from my little thing I read or uh, go to it. <laughs> I guess but, I hope it's full of like fake robots posting. Each other. <laughs> I hope so. I'm trying to sell each other things, right? You know what marketing is now? Just the internet is just filled with robots trying to sell other robots products, <laughs> right? Modern marketing—it's a wonderland. Uh, well, if that's all you got, that I'm is. Zach. I'm Matt. And goodbye. Mm.